Something incredible just happened. For once in his big dumb life, my male betamacrostoma did not eat all of his babies. I'm so proud of him. I've made a few videos on my betamacrostoma. They're a really beautiful fish. Even my big dumb one is a really beautiful fish. So the word beta, or beta as it's commonly referred to, actually refers to an entire family of fish, not just the cute little domesticated ones you see at the pet store. There are actually a lot of different species of beta. The largest species in the whole beta family is the beta macrostoma. They're a really stunning, mouth-brooding species, which means that after spawning, the male will actually hold all of the eggs in his mouth and sit there and just incubate them and protect them for like a month until the eggs have finally developed into little fry and he releases them into the water. The spawning process between a pair of macrostoma is actually really cool to see. So the pair will wrap and spawn then the female will actually go down to the substrate and pick up the eggs into her mouth. Then she'll swim back to the male and she'll position herself right at the male's like face and she'll actually transfer the eggs into his mouth. Because by then, he probably has such a huge mouthful of eggs, like he can't go pick up the eggs off the bottom of the floor. He needs help. And so the female helps him. It's really cool to see. They'll repeat this over and over until the male just has like these big bulging cheeks full of eggs. And then he'll kind of withdraw himself into a safe little place in the tank to just sit and take care of his brood. He'll hold the eggs for weeks before finally releasing the fry. I Ideally, he would do that because macrostoma are also very well known in the better world for swallowing their eggs. Like after all that work, the male will, you know, sit with those eggs in his mouth for a few days and then just eat them for no reason. Are the conditions not perfect? Eat the eggs. Is the light too bright? Eat the eggs. Did you leave the female in the tank with him? Eat the eggs. Did you take the female out? Eat the eggs. Did you walk past the tank too fast? Eat the eggs. Was there a noise? Just eat the eggs. Did you glance at the fish tank and the male noticed you do it? Eat the eggs. They're considered one of the more difficult bettas to spawn because of this. Well, not to spawn. It's not hard to get them to spawn. It, it can be really hard to get the male to just carry his mouthful of eggs to term and not swallow them. It's a little infuriating. Can you tell? Can you tell I'm a little agitated talking about this? Some people have no problem with their fish. They'll spawn and make tons of babies, no problem. But then some people, no matter what they do, they just can't get their males to just bring the eggs to term. A lot of people have males like mine with the fatherly instinct of a trash can. My female's wonderful though. She's really great. My female macrostoma actually came from Dean, from Dean's Fish Room, who you might know because he's on the Aquarium Co-op channel all the time. And I love his fish room. I actually lost my original female last summer and I was really bummed about it. And so Dean just happened to have a huge, beautiful female and he was like, hey, take this one. And he sent her to me. So shout out to Dean for my beautiful, huge female. I named her Bertha because she's just like so big. I love her. Anyway, imagine my surprise when one day I'm walking past the fish tank and I could swear I saw a tiny little baby. And then I go down and I peer in and sure enough, there's like two babies. I see two fry. It's not a lot. Two fry is not a lot, but it's not zero. So I'm like, wow, two fry. So imagine my shock. I haven't had success spawning this male for like two years now. He's produced batches of fry before, but he just hasn't for a long time and I could never figure out why. I've tried over and over for like two years with love and with patience, trying to coax this male into not being an idiot. I've tried blacking the tank out just to keep him very calm and it doesn't work. I've tried different water conditions. I've tried removing the female. I've tried keeping the female. I've tried different amounts of hiding places. I've placed the tank in different places in my house with no disruptions, with silence. 
without people walking by. I've tried various uh, levels of tannins in the water. I've stripped the eggs from the male, with, which means I actually catch the male and I kind of swish his mouth and I make him drop all the eggs into a little pail. And then I've tried incubating the eggs in an egg tumbler like three times and that didn't work because it kept fungusing. I've tried keeping him separate from the female for a while to fatten him up and really condition him well, but that didn't work. So I've tried a lot of things with no success. And then one day I see babies. Ah, oh, I just, so happy. I mentioned how he has the paternal instinct of a trash can. You know how sometimes you might go to throw something away and you open up the lid of the trash can and then like something falls out onto the floor? Just, just on accident? I think that's what happened. Like to this male, letting two fry survive was just a little oopsie daisy. It's a little mark on his perfect record of egg swallowing. It was a little oopsie whoopsie. The fry have been in with the parents for a while now. Um, I can't say when I first noticed, but I was a little hectic and I wasn't making a whole lot of videos at that time. So I didn't really do anything. I just left the fry in there. But now it's about time to remove the fry to give them their own space to grow out and just let them be my little precious baby macrostoma. What a perfect excuse to set up a beautiful little black water fish tank. This is my DIY CO2 tank. I emptied it part way so I could do this. Don't tip those over. Luckily, I had a bunch of tanks left over from when I broke down my fish room. So look, I have a 20 gallon long right there and that's gonna be where the baby macrostoma go. However, something unfortunate has happened. I wasn't paying attention and it turns out the tanks are gonna overhang by like that much. It's like half an inch. Ah, what do I do? It's on this side too. It's the only way I could fit them on this really cool Ikea shelf. What do you think guys? Is this a recipe for disaster? Or could I ignore it? <laughs> Maybe I'll go consult Google and see what Google thinks about having a tiny overhang on a rimmed tank. Could I get away with it? I don't know. Let's just move on while I think about that. I need stuff for the inside of this tank to make it look lovely and to make it a more habitable place for the macrostoma. This is going to be a planted black water tank. Macrostoma thrive in low pH environments. And the water where I live, it's the complete opposite. I have really hard, really alkaline water. And for this species, I wanna keep them in a tank that's much more like their natural environment. The natural habitat of the macrostoma is very soft. It's very dark. Uh, with, with tannins and with humic acid, and it's very acidic, which is the complete opposite of what I have. For species like this, I prefer to make my own water because I don't want them to get my tap water because it's really not suited to the species. I make my own water and then I alter it in a way where it drives the pH down and it also keeps it stable. This is a pH buffering substrate. It's gonna take the water that I make and push down the pH to make it more acidic and it's gonna keep it there. But there's a method to doing it right to make it so the substrate doesn't have to work as hard and it lasts longer. To make this easier for my substrate to do, I make my own water. I make my own basically pure H2O using an RO unit, a reverse osmosis unit. I remineralize the water just a little bit. I add a little bit of minerals in there to help support just a little bit of plant life because pure RO water will just melt plants away. Never use pure RO water with plants. But when I make my water, I don't add carbonate hardness back. And I don't do that because I want the pH buffering substrate to buffer the water for me and I don't want it to have to work as hard and battle against the KH and decrease the working life of the substrate, which might only be about uh, one and a half or two years. I think to properly explain it, I'm gonna have to just make an educational video about it. I'll add that to the to-do list. So I will add in my substrate, but I feel like it's also important to take into account plants because if you want to have a planted tank, you want to have a certain depth, you know, of your substrate to support the root structure of the plants. You want to make sure that your plants have enough nutrients 
for whatever you choose. And I haven't decided what I'm gonna do for my plants yet in this black water tank. Like, I'm not sure, should I do some, some heavy root feeders or should I just include plants that thrive in soft water environments like java fern or anubias that, you know, don't really need the soil. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet. Just in case I do the root feeders, I'm gonna add some of the laterite powder, which it's a really good source of iron and a bunch of minerals. And I usually add it to the bottom of my tanks. I'm just gonna add it. I think I'll do it fairly lightly though. And mostly there in the back. That's what I'll do. Just because I still, I haven't decided what my plants are gonna be. Now I'll add the substrate. I don't have enough. And that was my last bag. Uh, I have to go order more. So I'm gonna get some more. I'm just gonna buy like a little five pound bag and I'll get it from Flip Aquatics. I'm planning on adding some nice wood to this tank. So I have to think like, gosh, what wood do I wanna add to this tank? Well, I don't have any wood. I don't actually have any cool aquascaping wood or sticks or anything. To get neat aquascaping supplies, I, I have to go online and buy it. Like I actually go online, I find a nice rock or stick that I want and I buy it. I pay for shipping to buy the stick and the rock to get sent to me. <laughs> I just, I find the whole thing a little bit funny. Come on, it's funny. The last time I got a cool piece of hardscape for my aquarium, um, I was at a convention and it was too big to fit in my luggage. So I ended up checking it as a carry-on item and I carried this huge piece of driftwood on the plane, um, like a psychopath. And I got a lot of really strange stares when people saw me carrying my stick, my huge stick. No regrets though, because that is a beautiful piece of wood. I just sat down to my computer. Let's buy some sticks online. Technology is magical. Usually I get hardscape stuff from Flip Aquatics. Like their website usually has a lot of neat stuff like spider wood and Malaysian driftwood and nice little pieces and Mopani driftwood. But I want something bigger than that this time. So I'm not gonna go through Flip Aquatics. I'm looking for some big old manzanita branches to span the 20 gallon tank. Manzanita is a really pretty looking type of really durable wood that's popular in fish tanks and terrariums and vivariums. And a lot of people use them in aquascapes because they're pretty. Let's go to eBay. eBay has everything, including sticks and rocks. eBay. Don't mess around back there, go on. All right, I'm looking at sticks on eBay. There's actually a bunch of cool sticks. Um, just scrolling through these sticks. There's a lot of options. I ended up finding some pretty cool sticks that I thought were the right dimensions that looked kind of neat in the various positions that the seller put them in. Like, I like these, these look pretty nice. I think I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy these sticks. I was also looking around at lots of other sticks and I, th I think I found some other ones that I really need for an upcoming thing that I'm not gonna talk about yet. Those are the perfect sticks. I need those sticks. Yes, buy it. And this this is a cool thing that I also need for something coming up. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna find a, a place to use this. I need it. I'm already on eBay where you can find anything. I need to buy this too. eBay is a trap. Okay, I gotta keep looking. Man. Do you like those sticks? Those are some good sticks. Okay. I admit, after I bought that wood, I kept browsing around on eBay and I found something so cool. Look at this. This is the most evil piece of driftwood I've ever seen. This is amazing and I need it and I need to do something with it and I have to make an evil fish tank. I can't not get this. I'm already buying sticks on eBay. This is like a super villain's castle or like a dragon's den down below. Oh my God. Oh my God, I gotta buy it. Okay, I'm gonna get off eBay. Uh, I've already found enough. I'm done. Okay, I'm so excited. My substrate came in the mail. I got some more Florin Volcanite from Flip Aquatics. I'm gonna put it into the tank so my plants, whatever I choose, have a little more depth to work with. These are little bags, so I'll do one more. Beautiful. Let's fill it up. Let's fill it up. Let's fill it up. So excited. 
Like I mentioned earlier, I make pure H2O in a big trash can of mine. It's my big water bucket. Then I add in a little bit of minerals. I use a product called Florin Delta GH+. It basically only adds general hardness. It doesn't add carbonate hardness, which is exactly what I want. So I calculate the amount that I need and then I measure it and then I put it into my pure water and I let it mix. I'm gonna let it mix for like maybe an hour or so and then I'll fill up this tank. So a quick note about planted tank substrates. You don't want to fill up the tank too fast. The reason for this is if you have a big gush of water come up and stir up this substrate, it's gonna get muddy and you're probably not gonna like the way it looks. It's gonna take forever for the water to clear up again. I'm just gonna take the plastic bag that held the substrate and I'm gonna put it, I'm making like a little slide for the water to just gently slide down into the substrate. So I'm gonna turn my nozzle. I have a pump that pumps out my fresh water and I'm just gonna slowly fill this up. I'm gonna put my filter in place. This is just an old, I think a Denarole internal box filter that I really like because they're quiet. I don't wanna hear a filter in this room because I sleep in here. It bugs me. Uh, this is just an old one that I cleaned. Now it's time to get this tank cycled. What does that mean? You have to establish your bacteria before you're supposed to put fish in a tank. So now in this tank, I have sparkling clean water. I have a clean filter, but I don't really have any bacteria established. Usually when I start new tanks, I, I start sterile and I use a bacterial starter. I use like a bacteria food and a, and a fresh sponge filter. But now the problem is if you take a clean sponge filter full of all the bacteria you need, or if you're dosing a bacterial starter, you're putting it in fresh, clean water and there's nothing for the bacteria to eat. There are multiple types of bacteria in fish tanks that eat different kinds of waste. And you need to establish all the bacteria to, to have a cycled fish tank. There's no food source in here for the bacteria. There's bacteria that consumes waste and produces ammonia. Then there's bacteria that consumes ammonia and produces nitrite. And then there's bacteria that consumes nitrites and, and produces nitrates. And you need this cycle before you put fish in. Otherwise, those first two things are super toxic. So because there's literally nothing in a clean, fresh tank for bacteria to eat and grow off of, I'm gonna dose like a bacterial food. I use Fast Start from Brightwell. They are my sponsor and I use all my products. I'm gonna follow the instructions and dose this tank to get those small readings that I need to feed the bacteria. I'll wait for that cycle to establish. It's giving all the different types of bacteria that you need in the cycle food on a consistent basis so their populations can grow. So you can add a fish in. And then after I dose the bacteria food into the clean, sterile water, um, I also dose a bacterial starter, in which case I use Florin Bacter for my new tanks to establish new filters or new sponge filters. So I'm really excited to make this planted black water tank. I think it's gonna be neat. And I think that my fry are really going to like it. So next time I come back to this, this tank will be fully cycled, and then I'll go ahead, I'll put the hardscape and the cool wood into here, the eBay wood, and plants. And I'm gonna make it really pretty. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that stuff that people always say to do, and I'll see you next time.